The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you, and know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today we are celebrating Holy Trinity Sunday, and fittingly so, because it is at this point we can be certain that God is Father, Son, and Spirit. Now, why do I say this? In our whole journey that we have gone through, our faith journey in the past few months, right until last week, when we celebrated Pentecost, right? So at Pentecost, we received the Holy Spirit. There is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the revelation that the Holy Spirit yeah, the third person of the Trinity, the revelation of the Holy Spirit to us. So we know that God is also Holy Spirit. Yeah? So we have God, the Father, and when we think of the Father, we think of creation. Isn't that so? And that's what the first reading was trying to tell us. Though we must know that even the work of creation is the work of the whole Trinity. It is the work of the Trinity, not just of the Father. Yeah? So the Father creates through the Son and it is in the Holy Spirit that everything has been. Yeah? So it's always a work of the Trinity. So more correctly speaking, it is we just say God who is our creator. And when we say God as Catholics, we mean the Holy Trinity. So now, if I were to ask you, are we Catholics monotheists? Do you know what the word monotheist means? Okay, mono means one lah. Theist is someone who believes in God. So monotheist is someone who believes in one God. And the answer is yes, but the answer is also no. Yes, because we believe there is indeed one God, but not in the sense of a solitary God. But we believe in a Trinitarian monotheism. Okay, so if anybody asks you, are you a monotheist? Yes, you are. But what kind of a monotheist are you? A Trinitarian monotheist. Trinitarian because we believe God is one and we believe that God, this same one God, is Father, Son and Spirit. Okay, One God, three persons. So that is a Trinitarian monotheist. Okay? So just remember that. Trinitarian monotheism. That is what our Catholic faith follows and what most of the other churches also follow. Majority of Christians follow this. Okay. And the only reason why we believe in this doctrine of the Trinity is because it has been revealed by God. It's not something logical, actually. Yeah? Because one plus one plus one is supposed to be three. How come there are no three gods? Right? So it's not in that mathematical sense. Yeah? And in fact, the only reason why we know God is Trinity is because God has revealed Himself. So that's the whole journey we see in the Bible. God revealing himself to the people of Israel, right? Speaks to Moses, yeah? Speaks to Abraham, speaks to Moses and all the prophets. So the people of Israel know there is God who is creator. Then for us Christians, because we believe Jesus is the son of God, that he is truly divine, fully human, but fully divine also. Because of that, we know God is Father and Son. And finally, Jesus himself teaches us. He will send us his Spirit, who is also the Spirit of the Father. And we know the Spirit is also 
divine. So that's how we know Father, Son and Spirit. So remember, the only reason why we know that God is triune, that He is Trinity, is because it has been revealed to us through Scripture and through history, the history of our faith, the revelation of our faith. Okay? Not supposed to be uh, mathematical logic. Okay? So now, for some people, this is difficult to accept because for some, only logic reigns supreme and they may not believe in God's revelation. So some who are more only, they say, we want empirical evidence, scientifically minded, logical. Then actually, maybe they can only reach belief in one supreme God. So that is pure monotheism, okay? which we actually are not. Okay, now coming to today's gospel, we see in today's gospel, Jesus' command to the disciples to go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. First thing to note, he doesn't say go and baptize in the names of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that is a clue, an indicator that Father, Son and Spirit are one. Okay, in the one name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the second thing he tells us, interesting also, is to teach them whom we are baptizing to observe all the commands that he gave us. Second statement. Eh? And then the third statement, also very important. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. All right, so though today is Holy Trinity Sunday, let us not get stuck only at the first sentence that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and that we are to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us look at the next sentence also, which is that we should be taught to observe all the commands that He, Jesus, had given us. And that's what we are trying to do also, right? All the time, we are catechizing the children, we are preaching in the churches, we are having Bible classes, we are having all kinds of retreats and seminars and symposiums and preaching, basically, to teach us the teachings of Jesus. And why is this important? So that, this is the third sentence, He will be with us always. Now, there's a deeper meaning to this, actually. Because Jesus tells us yeah, in the Gospel of John that if we obey His commands, He will abide in us. He will live in us. And not only He will live in us, the Father and Him will live in us. That's what He says in the Gospel of John. And in fact, we know not only the Father and Him, but also the Holy Spirit. So this brings us to another great truth of our faith, which is often forgotten or not thought of, and that is the indwelling of the Holy Trinity. So not only we believe God is triune, not only we believe God is Trinity, we also believe that the Trinity dwells in each one of us. Did you all know that? That's why we say you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit is, the Father and the Son also is. Because they are one God, are they not? So when we say you are a temple of the Holy Spirit, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, that also is pointing to this doctrine of the indwelling of the Most Holy Trinity. You know, sometimes we like to come to church and pray because we say, oh, Jesus is there in the tabernacle. And He is, truly He is, uh, under the species of bread and wine, uh, the consecrated host, truly the body and blood of Christ. And yes, He is there. But did you know that you are also a living tabernacle? Uh, that is the thing which we often take for granted. And we forget. And if we remember this always, we keep this before our minds always, actually, we will not dare to commit any sin. Well, I'm sure some are still there, but <laughs> theoretically speaking, if we are God-fearing people, I don't think we would want to do anything profane in the temple of God. Isn't that so? Right? Okay, in church even, somebody might throw some sampah here and there, but I don't know, out of bad habit. 
but never with the intention to harm anyone or never with the intention of you know, offending God, really, right? Because we know this is a holy place. But if only we realize that I as a human being, you as a human being, is also a holy temple that should be kept sacred, that should not be profane, hopefully then we will stay away from committing evil sins, whether against ourselves or against our neighbour. Just as how we would like to preserve the sanctity of this building, of this sacred space, we need to preserve the sanctity also, uphold and safeguard the sanctity of the human person who is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so that's something let us remember. So wherever you are, my dear brothers and sisters, heavy rain, whatever, you couldn't come to church to pray, don't think that you cannot be with our Lord Jesus Christ. You can. Because He dwells in you. There is one caveat though. Remember I told you about the second sentence today? Teach them to observe, observe all that I command you. Now if you are someone who doesn't follow the teachings of Jesus, and you willingly, of your own free will, rebel against Him constantly. You rebel against the Holy Spirit constantly. You are not happy to be a child of God. In fact, you'd rather God be out of your life. You'd rather not be His holy temple. Is God going to dwell in you? You don't want Him there. So, is He going to force His presence into you? No. He respects you for that. So when you tell the Holy Spirit, get out of, my, of this house, this is my house, not your temple anymore, Spirit will leave. And that's what some people do. Maybe not in so many words, but through so many actions. Every time they break the commandments in a serious and grave manner, whatever the, whichever commandment is broken. Every time we decide to ignore God, and to say, I am master of my own life, therefore I am master of my own house, therefore you are out. Every time we do that, we reject this indwelling of God in us. Now, in traditional language, we would talk about being in the state of grace and being in a state of sin. right? So when someone is in a state of grace, it means that God is dwelling in that person. And we know, we fall out of the state of grace at times. And how do we return to this state of grace? We acknowledge our faults, we confess our sins. And in confessing our sins, we are inviting God again, return to me, Lord. I want to be your holy temple again. Now, when did we first start becoming this holy temple of God? Actually, baptism. See, come back to what our gospel was about. Jesus commanding, go and baptize. Because that is how we start to be the temple of God. The moment we are washed in the waters of baptism, the Holy Spirit descends upon us and takes up His dwelling in us. At that moment, truly, I am a child of God. At that moment, truly, I have become a temple of God. At that moment, I can believe that God is dwelling in me. So that is why baptism is the doorway, the entrance to all the sacraments, to the whole life of holiness, to our Christian life. We have to be baptized. It's not enough to just say, ah, I like to come to church once in a while, sing some songs, but I don't want to be baptized. I don't want to, my name to be written anywhere. I don't want to be formally a Christian. Still, that means you are not yet ready to be God's temple. Yeah, so baptism is that moment when we become the temple of God, when we become truly children of God. And that brings us back to the second reading, which tells us everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. And only the Spirit can move us to receive baptism. Only the Spirit can move us to desire and to want to be that temple of God. And more importantly, to be that son of and daughter of God. Okay? And it is this same spirit that makes us cry out, Abba, Father. 
right? So we recognize our Father in heaven. We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we live under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Now that, my dear brothers and sisters, is a Trinitarian life that we are living in our day-to-day life. Okay? All following so far? All right, very good. Actually, up to this point, you have heard, you have understood, that's fine. Very good. We can give glory to the Most Holy Trinity. And we know this belief is something really important to my life because God, who is Trinity, is dwelling in me. And it's so important to live a life of holiness so that I can continue to be that temple of God, so that I can continue to be that son and daughter of God. Okay, just one extra point if you don't mind. I always try to tamba a little bit. Okay, this is a lot already, I know. Just uh, extra one more point if you don't mind. (laughs) Having said all of these things about being baptized, baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit, you become a son and daughter of God. What about those who are not baptized? Are we saying that they are not children of God? Mm, See, this is the more difficult thing to talk about. So does that mean only those people sitting in this church are sons and daughters of God? What about those opposite there near the Sikh Gudwara? There's the Hindu temple, all on that side. That side, there's the state mosque. Very good. For once, I hear something other than your loud clapping. (laughs) Yes, okay. Anyway, give him an applause for his courage. Okay, he's always there, I see. Very outstanding. Yes, all are children of God. Now, when we say all are children of God, in what sense? In the sense that God is definitely their Father. God is the creator of every one of us. In that sense, all of us are children of God. And we give praise and thanks to God for this. So what does it mean then when we say that because of baptism, we become children of God? Actually, more correctly, we become adopted sons and daughters of God. It means that we recognize and accept that God is truly our Father. And we want Him to be in our lives because of Jesus Christ. That's the additional So yes, all are children of God. And yet, amongst this whole multitude of children of God, there are some who will even say, there is no God in heaven, nor on earth. And yet, they remain God's children. At least, that's what we believe. Though they may not believe there is God. Those who do not believe that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but they believe that there is a God. They too are being led by the Spirit to do good and to seek God out. Can we say that they are not children of God? They also are children of God. So remember, never should we condemn anyone and say that only we are children of God. All are children of God from the first sense of being created by God. In the second sense that many are also sincerely and honestly seeking the divine. Just that maybe they didn't discover Visitation Church yet all stuck on that side of the world, or maybe on that side of the world. I don't know why. There's a roadblock somewhere. Maybe the roadblock is our own Catholics. I do not know. Yes, sometimes we are the reason why people don't want to know Christ. And are they going to be blamed for that? No, we will be responsible for it. Yeah. So remember, from the sense that all of us are created by God, everyone is a dignified son and daughter of God. And we should never trample on the rights of anyone, respecting God, the Creator, and respecting each human being as a precious child of God. Secondly, let us recognize that in seeking good, in seeking the divine, though they may not have found their way to Christ yet in this life, they are also truly God-seekers. And in this sense, they too have knowledge of God. So we should not despise them. And thirdly, let us remember our responsibility 
not to be a stumbling block, not to be an obstacle to others, not to give scandal to the world such that they don't want to believe in Jesus because they look at you and me and say, my goodness, that is a disciple of Jesus? I think better I follow somebody else. Yes, many a times people reject our Lord because of us because of the sins we have committed, because of the times we have profaned our own selves, the temple of God. And we ourselves worship the idols that we may have set up in our lives. So, today we want to pray also for everybody in the world that they will come to know the one true God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we want to pray for ourselves too that we will never forget that God is dwelling in us and that is in our life and through our life that the world can know that God is truly Father, Son and Spirit. It is through our deeds and actions that the world can be convinced that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. So we pray for our own conversion on this day and we pray to deepen our relationship with God and remember, you are a walking tabernacle if you are following the commands of Jesus, keeping the commandments and loving God and neighbor. You are a living, walking tabernacle. Keep that temple that you are clean and sacred and holy.